So this little video is about human blood groups. Uh, not sure whether any other animals have them. Probably have to ask your vet. Does my dog have a blood group? Um, so human blood groups depend on uh, antigens. And just a bit of synoptic here. Uh, these are part of the glycocalyx. And therefore, they are oligo, which means short saccharides. So these are short chains of monosaccharides on the surface of red blood cells. Now, actually, all of your cells have these antigens on the surface. All of your cells have uh, antigenic properties. But particularly in human blood groups, we're talking about having a antigen, we're not talking about having B antigen or talking about having no antigens at all. And these are a good example of having three alleles that control the trait, uh, the characteristic, of which you only have two at a time, obviously, um, but also of codominance and uh, recessiveness. So our antigens, our antigen types, are A and B. They're genetically controlled, so there's uh, allele A leads to antigen A, and allele B leads to antigen B, and then we have another allele which codes for no antigens. And the thing about these two here, allele A and allele B, is that they are co-dominant. And both of them are dominant over the O allele. Now remember that in a cell, you have a homologous pair of chromosomes. And what we're saying is, OK, on each of these we have a gene for blood group. So you can only have one gene at a time. Now often in um, multiple alleles, so this is, we've got three here, so that's three alleles, it's called multiple alleles. We give them a locus letter. So, you know, if it, if you were if you're looking at multiple alleles for flower colour, you might be uh, calling the locus letter F. It just states what position that they're at the same position. For multi for blood groups, the locus letter to let you know that they're at the same locus and not on different chromosomes on the same chromosomes. So you can only have two. Is the letter I. Big I means dominant, and little i is recessive. So this is a dominant allele, that's a dominant allele. They're co-dominant with each other, but they're both dominant over O. Which leads us to have four different phenotypes. So, phenotype is our appearance. So you could have blood group A, and your genotype then, as a dominant allele, expressed in the homozygous condition and in the heterozygous condition. If I have got the phenotype B, expressed in the homozygous, and expressed in the heterozygous condition. Notice how we've only got two alleles for the characteristic. You could have blood group AB then 
no choice there. There's only one genotype. You have to have an allele to code for the A antigen and one to code for the B. And last but by no means least, because this is my blood group, you can have the two recessive alleles, sorry, and the blood group O. And about, around about 45% of the population of blood group O is the commonest one. There is also another antigen on red blood cells called the rhesus factor that we're not going to deal with. That's just a straight, there are two alleles. You've got the allele for the antigen or you've got the allele for no antigen. Um, so you'll hear people say that they're, you know, like I am O rhesus positive. I mean, I have the rhesus antigen, but I don't have any of these A, B antigens on my blood cells. Um, o negative would mean that they haven't got any of those antigens at all. And very often on sort of programs like Holby City and Casualty ER, you'll hear them shouting for O neg. It's the universal donor. It, because there are no antigens, it won't cause a problem for donation. Now, what you do need to be aware of is that uh, a child would get one allele from each parent. So we can use it as a very broad, it has to be said, <laughs> tool for establishing paternity. So, you know, if I claim that um, I've got, I've given birth to David Beckham's fifth child, perish the thought, um, and my child has uh, blood group A, but he has got blood group O and I've got blood group O, there's absolutely no chance. Where's that blood group A allele come from? It's, you know, it, it's obviously come from the father because I haven't got one. So there are all sorts of scenarios. And I think on the Amoeba Sisters worksheet that you've done, it says, you know, could, a, could somebody with a blood group AB have a, a blood group I child? Well, no. A blood group I child has inherited one little I allele from their mom and one from their dad, but this AB person doesn't have one. Probably the most complicated cross you could do would be between two heterozygotes. So we'll just do that one. So if we've got a heterozygote for blood group A, crossed with a heterozygote for blood group B, blood group A person's going to produce A allele gametes and O allele gametes. Put my cross sign in there just to keep everything tidy, make sure I don't make a mistake. IB gametes, fly gametes, into the Punnett square we go. Parent one. And as possible offspring, we could get one with, I, uh, with blood type AB. One with blood type B, one with blood type A, and one with blood type O. So parents with that are blood group A and B could potentially have any one of these phenotypes. Again, 25% chance each time, one, in, one out of every four. So we would get, just matching the genotypes to the phenotypes, this would be group a, B, and we've got one of those. I, B, I gives us group B. I, A, little I gives us group A, Not one of those. And I don't know why it's always last. We've got then group O, we've got one of those, one to one to one to one ratio. And you should be able to work forwards and backwards through that. You should be able to use those um, genotypes to work backwards and say, yes, it's possible, it's not possible. This is my genetics diagram to show uh, what is possible and what is not possible. Okay.